Hello again. Glad you've clicked on this link for another edition of Disaster Hack. Today we will cover an extremely important subject, that of vulnerable populations. I have four objectives for our lesson today. First of all, I want to acknowledge social vulnerability, special populations, and those with functional needs. I want to anticipate the concerns that we might have regarding these individuals and groups. List some things that we can do to address their needs before, during, and after disaster. And keep in mind that these individuals and groups are very resilient and we can harness their characteristics to help us and them in and after disaster. Let's get started. When we talk about vulnerable populations, we're really talking about individuals and groups that are prone to being impacted by a disaster or Sometimes these individuals and groups are least able to uh, mitigate, prepare, respond, and recover. Sometimes they're known as special populations because they need extra attention or care. In other cases, we're talking about functional needs, people who are disabled uh, and may need extra attention in a disaster. Gender is one variable that has been identified as a potential contributing factor towards social vulnerability. Sadly, for example, women, single women, or single mothers lack income, which is necessary to help them to mitigate and prepare for disasters. Also, women are at risk because of their roles as mothers. Many of them are protecting their children. And for instance, in a flood situation, how do you hold on to your child and hold on to a pole or a tree to save yourself at the same time? That's very difficult. It's been illustrated that women might be more likely to suffer from PTSD after disaster. Women are targets of violence, uh, domestic violence after disaster. And uh, it's also uh, been illustrated that some of the government programs or disaster assistance is not designed specifically for women and may not be as helpful as we would like it to be. Now keep in mind, Women aren't the only individuals who are prone to disasters. Men are often working in dangerous first response organizations, and men have fewer support networks to help them recover after disaster. So gender is a little bit complicated when it comes to social vulnerability. Race and ethnicity are two other variables which are linked to social vulnerability according to the disaster research literature. For instance, some people may lack income, which may limit their options for housing, and therefore they live in high-risk areas. Perhaps people have a different type of risk perception. They lack education or don't understand the risks. Perhaps their response to disasters is different than other people. For instance, it's been illustrated that some Hispanics or African Americans are maybe less willing to evacuate for whatever reason. In addition, there's the possibility of discriminatory practices. Uh, there's less financial aid given to disaster victims who are minorities, perhaps because they can't qualify for loans. There's also the potential for language barriers. People don't understand warnings in English. In other cases, there's sensitivities related to culture. Um, maybe some people are uh, adverse to getting help because they're in the country illegally. In other cases, there's a, a variety of other factors that may be at play. Maybe migrant workers don't have social networks, and this has an impact on their vulnerability in other ways. Poverty is another key contributor towards social vulnerability. People who lack income live in dangerous areas, dilapidated housing, they can't purchase insurance. They don't have money for fire extinguishers or smoke detectors. They can't evacuate because they don't have a car or they don't have money for gas or a hotel. There are many barriers that poverty places on those individuals and this leads to social vulnerability. Tourists have been identified as another special population in a disaster situation. They don't understand the hazards of the area they don't know the language, so they can't comprehend the warning messages they're receiving, and they don't know evacuation routes, for instance. The elderly comprise another category of social vulnerability or special populations. 
These individuals are frail. Perhaps they can't see or hear very well. They can't take care of their basic needs on a daily basis, and their dependence on others is magnified in a disaster situation. Children are another group of special populations that have to be considered in a disaster situation. Babies, infants, and small children can't take care of themselves on a routine basis, and this is more complicated in disaster situations. They may not comprehend what to do to protect themselves, for example, and they may suffer from PTSD from the gruesome images and experiences of disasters. The disabled are another potentially vulnerable group in a disaster situation. Whether it's from physical or mental disabilities, these people may not be able to hear or see, they may not be mobile, they may not comprehend risk or how to respond to a disaster. To varying degrees, they may be dependent on others for assistance in time of a disaster. Thus far, I've mentioned some of the main individuals who are considered or may be considered as special populations or vulnerable groups, but there's many others. For instance, prisoners who are locked behind bars when a disaster occurs, patients in hospital who need medical care and treatment such as IVs, residents in nursing homes who rely on staff for food and water, the homebound, perhaps someone who's obese and, and immobile as a result, illegal aliens and migrant workers who may not have documentation and may fear giving information to government employees which uh, prohibits them from getting disaster assistance, people with pets who refuse to evacuate, farmers and ranchers who have to care for cattle in a disaster situation, and there's many others, children at school or in daycare. So it's really important that we consider who is more prone to a disaster and perhaps less able or capable of responding and reacting effectively. So we might ask ourselves, how can we help these vulnerable groups, these special populations, or those with functional needs? First of all, we need to acknowledge these groups do exist, and they will have special concerns in a disaster situation. In general, we need to promote more social, economic, political justice and equality. We can also register these individuals through 211 systems. This is a system where we take down their name, their address, their phone, and we understand better what their needs are and what concerns they might have in a disaster situation. We need to keep these groups in mind when a disaster occurs, address their needs, and harness any financial and other resources to care for them when a disaster strikes. Now there's one other really important thing to keep in mind. In some ways, we've identified these individuals and groups as being victims, people who can't control their situation. That cannot be further from the truth. For instance, many of these individuals can be very resilient. Women have very strong social networks and they're very passionate about helping their community during recovery. Minorities can be tapped to help us get word out and warn people and facilitate evacuations. Each individual and group can help us reduce vulnerability and be more resilient. To wrap up, let's reiterate again that certain individuals and groups may experience more severe impacts in a disaster situation. These groups may therefore need additional assistance, whether it's with warning, evacuation, sheltering, or any other function. But it's important to keep in mind that we can harness the strengths of these individuals. They're not only victims. They're people who can help us reduce vulnerability and become more resilient. If you're seeking additional information about special populations and social vulnerability and functional needs, I would point you to some great articles by Alice Fothergill and her colleagues. In addition, there's a wonderful book on social vulnerability by Deborah Thomas and her colleagues, and this has up-to-date information about special populations, social vulnerability, and functional needs. Thanks again for tuning in. Have a great day.